So now we begin lecture 13 and this is going to be on the steepest descent method. Now essentially we have talked a lot about search directions and this is the first time we formally introduce a search direction. And essentially how we do that is let us postulate that fx is a function and the direction of steepest descent at any point is d equals negative of c. And this we have seen from our previous lecture is the direction of steepest descent or the direction in which the function will decrease to the maximum possible extent. Now we should immediately put this search direction to the test of whether it satisfies the descent condition. And here we see that the descent condition is c dot d is less than zero and therefore if we do c dot d it becomes negative c dot c and so this is always going to be less than zero because this is essentially the norm of the vector c. The termination criteria for this method could be that the norm of c is less than some very small number which we could specify as 10 to the power of minus 8. Now in some situations you may have a case where you don't actually reach the norm to be a very low value and the method may get stuck and therefore most professional software have some kind of escape strategy in case that happens and one of them could be the maximum number of iterations has been exceeded. This could be something like 50 or 75 or something like that depending on your patience and the second could be that design show very small change after a certain point of time. So maybe you are monitoring the designs as you go from k to k plus 1 to k plus 2 and you keep seeing what is the change in these designs. So you could create some metric here and therefore you can look at this particular metric and if this metric is becoming smaller than some very small number epsilon then you could also stop this particular method. Now one interesting property of the steepest descent method is that successive directions of steepest descent are normal. So what this means is that dk dot dk plus 1 is equal to 0. So again remember these are successive directions that is the kth and the k plus 1th direction and the dot product of these two vectors is going to be 0 therefore these vectors are normal. Now how to prove this let us go back to the line search criteria. So if you recall the line search criteria it was ck plus 1 dot dk equal to 0. And in this if we put in the fact that dk is now negative ck essentially ck plus 1 dot ck or dk plus 1 dot dk would be equal to 0. So from this we see that these two search directions are normal and also the two gradients here are also going to be normal because the search direction is essentially nothing but the negative of the gradient vector. So essentially the line search criteria leads to this particular normality of the search directions. Now you could use this equation as a line search criteria ck plus 1 dot dk is equal to 0 but in many cases because of numerical round off and truncation this doesn't exactly hold. So whenever you are working on a computer you cannot satisfy equations in this form. So what you do is you say that this dot product should be less than some very small number which you could specify as 10 to the power of minus 8 or 10 to the power of minus 4 or various numbers as the case may be and then you are satisfied with this particular number and therefore you say the line search criteria is satisfied at a particular point. Now we are going to write out this particular method the steepest descent method. So this particular way of writing the algorithm is generally common across a variety of methods and you are going to see that the search direction is going to keep changing depending on the method and the remaining parts of the methods are going to be more or less same. So essentially all these methods require a starting design x superscript 0 and here we choose this particular design and set the iteration counter k to be equal to 0. So these are fundamental steps in 
gradient based methods is that they require a starting design and this is a very important fact about gradient based methods now we also select some kind of convergence criteria so a small number and we could select maybe 10 to the power of minus 5 here now next is calculate the gradient vector ck so if you are at point 0 of course you calculate the gradient vector at c0 if you are at point beyond that you do it at ck so this is a general form of saying this that calculate the gradient vector at xk and that is going to be ck now this gradient vector calculation is a very important step in optimization now there are many functions where you can differentiate the functions and obtain closed form solutions and in those cases ck can be explicitly coded into a function or into the program itself and if that is not the case then you may have a situation where the function has to be obtained from some numerical method and in those cases you may have to use a finite difference method to actually calculate the gradient vector now once you have calculated the gradient vector ck you calculate the norm of this gradient vector and if the norm of this gradient vector is zero or is less than your small number then you actually have started with the minimum point and you may have got very lucky or you may have been testing your method and in that case you basically have converged at this point itself and you need not go further however in case this is not true which is the case of most starting designs then you define a search direction at current point xk as dk is minus ck so this is the steepest descent search direction now once you have figured out this search direction the next step is to find the step size alpha k which minimizes the next point now recall the next point of the function value has to be calculated at xk plus the step size into dk where dk was already obtained here now you do a one dimensional search here so this is where the methods which we discussed in the previous chapter come in now this one dimensional search may be your golden search or a quadratic search or any of those methods and therefore you have a function or a subroutine which essentially calls those methods here finds the optimal step size and then once again checks the fact that has the gradient vector become less than this small number so the gradient vector if it is smaller than this particular epsilon then you stop or you set x star is x k x star being the optimal point or the minimum point now you update the design so if this is not true you are still searching and therefore your x k plus 1 becomes x k plus alpha k into d k so this is how you move about in the design space you take the search direction you do the one dimensional search you get to the next point and then you move on now once you have done this you set k is equal to k plus 1 that means you consider this as the current point and go back to step 2 which is this step here which is you calculate the gradient vector at this point x k plus 1 and you cal calculate this whole thing and you keep going back and forth here so this whole thing is essentially in the form of a loop and the way to to exit the loop would be that this norm is less than epsilon now as i mentioned before you may put in some more statements here you could also leave the loop if you have gone through a large number of k so you could have a k max at 50 and if you haven't converged by that point you may leave this particular loop or you could choose between k k plus 1 k plus 2 and various points and if the points have stopped changing you could also leave this particular loop here so in those cases you essentially leave the method and you tell the user that you have tried your best and maybe you have not converged now the steepest descent method is very classical and simple I think it was invented by Kochi, but it suffers from some serious shortcomings, which essentially creates problems when you apply this to practical problems. Now, one problem is the method is quite slow. And this happens partly because the informations of the previous designs 
and such directions or gradients is not used. So you'll see here you are only using C of K at the current point. You are not using C K minus one and so on. And therefore, this method is essentially blind as far as what has happened in the past. So that's one of the reasons why this method is slow. Now what often happens here is that the first few cases, you will get a substantial reduction in the objective function. And after that, the objective function will start decreasing very slowly. One more problem is that the search directions are normal. Remember that dk plus one dot dk is zero. And therefore you get this zigzag movement of the search directions toward the optimal point. And in many cases, this actually creates a situation where as you get close to the minimum point, you keep circling around the minimum point, but you do not actually descend. So this is somewhat similar to how airplanes keep uh, circulating around congested airports and are not allowed to land. Now, the reason why the steepest descent method is so important is because you have a fundamental concept here of gradient information being used to give the search direction. Now, we will see that powerful methods such as conjugate gradient method create a small deflection in this gradient direction to actually get a better convergence property. Now, there are cases where you may not be able to get the optimal step size. And in those cases, you could use a fixed step size in this method and then you can skip the line search part. So essentially the method would then simply become this algorithm here and alpha could be some small number. Now, if you have a quadratic function, there is a particular bound which you can use here. So essentially alpha, if it is between zero and then two by lambda max A, then this would work out very well, where A is a positive symmetric definite matrix corresponding to the quadratic function and lambda essentially represent the eigenvalues of A and lambda max is the maximum such number. Now, sometime if you do not have the luxury of doing the one dimensional search, you could choose a small step size and just let this method go on and you could actually converge. So this is a situation which is sometimes used in cases where a 1D search code is not there. And if your boss has told you to get some optimal design very rapidly, and very roughly, you could use a steepest descent method with a small step size and get some better design point. That's because even if you do not have optimization software, this method is very easy to code and it would probably work for many problems. Now, in certain peculiar cases, the steepest descent method converges in just one shot. And this is for a quadratic function whose matrix A has a condition number of one. So again, we are talking quadratic forms here, basically. Now condition number is something defined as follows. It is actually the ratio of lambda max by lambda min, where lambdas are the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So that's something to remember. So essentially, whenever you have a quadratic function, one way to improve its behavior is to drive its condition number as close to one as possible. So you can accomplish this sometime by scaling. So for a non-quadratic function, the condition number of the Hessian matrix affects the convergence rates. So like I mentioned before, it is possible to scale the design vector to adjust the condition number. For example, we could have a function f of x and we could define a new variable y such that x is ty where T is a transformation matrix. So if we put this particular value into uh, the function, then we get a new function G in terms of Y. And if you have selected this matrix T in a very judicious manner, then the condition number of the Hessian can be made close to one. And in case that has happened, then you will find this method will converge much faster. So this is a kind of secret which you can use in many conditions and this also tells you why scaling is so important in many cases. So again, this was the end of my video here on the steepest descent method. And you will see this method plays an important role even in fields such as machine learning and deep learning where various permutations of this method are used. For example, the 
stochastic descent method and so on. So in my next videos, I will start talking about the conjugate gradient methods and so on. And we will go deeper into this descent direction with better and more powerful methods. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned to my channel and subscribe for more such videos. Thank you very much.